Last week, I published a video titled The Power of Music, where I shared my love of music and art and talked about my theory of music and art being a portal that we all travel through to access different types of energy, which we then use as fuel to drive us in our lives. When I filmed this video, I included an example of this theory in action, which is a recent piece of art and a portal that I love which is the song Pricks by grime legend JME. I filmed a sort of reaction video almost to the song, breaking down the lyrics, the themes, and why, despite me not being a aspiring grime artist, the song gives me fuel in terms of building and creating success on my own terms. Enjoy. JME or Jamie Adenuga is a British MC and absolute legend of the grime world. He is perhaps best known for founding the label slash crew BBK or Boy Better Know with his brother Skepta who is similarly one of the world's leading grime MCs. In an interview with the internet's busiest music nerd, AKA Anthony Fantiano, Jamie explains the simple title for the album, Grime MC, relating to the feeling and insight that despite his many varied identities and talents, at the core of his success and what has enabled him to forge his path in life, is being a grime MC. I really find that to be an interesting exercise in self-reflection to attempt to boil down who you are and what you do into a single title. Maybe have a go at it now if you're watching this and let me know down in the comments below. In a literal sense, the song Pricks is about Jamie's experience clashing with music label executives over the creative control or direction of his art and advice he has for up and coming grime MCs looking to make it in the game. Now, while I like to create in a number of different artistic mediums, it's fairly safe to say that a grime career isn't in my plans. And so one might assume that on the surface, this song has limited value for me. However, I would argue that in actively listening and identifying the underlying themes and messages of the song, it is highly relevant and valuable to anyone looking to create success on their own terms and avoid the common traps or distractions that exist in every industry. I thought it would be interesting and fun to break down the song's lyrics line by line and analyze the meaning and the lessons that can be learned from them. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. For that, we are going to need ridiculously sized headphones and the internet. Used to think my style didn't fit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Lost motivation to spit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Used to care about views and clicks till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Bare industry politics till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Opening hook sets the scene. Why are you doing what you're doing? And what impact is that going to have on your motivation, your creative juice? Don't ask me for no clean version of my rhythm. You can't ask Denzel for a clean version of training day. Take what you give him. There ain't no clean version of the equalizer. There ain't no clean take in the Pelham. There ain't no clean version of Michelangelo's artwork with a penis hidden. Those first bars, the idea of consuming art as it was intended by the artist. No version of the Michelangelo statue with the penis hidden. JME is known for his lyrics and for his abstract metaphors and things like that. And it is a perfect example of, you know, not censoring art. And when you attempt to do so, you water down any of the impact or the effect that it may have. Also some shout outs to Denzel Washington. Training day, absolutely worth a rewatch if you haven't seen it in a while. No record deal, never had one. Got no manager never had one got no stylist never had one got no publisher never had one got no pa never had one got no pr never had one ain't nobody telling me nothing about my career from they never had one Fam he was talking obviously about if you have the drive if you have the talent the work ethic those kind of things you are able to forge a way and make it without the help or without outsourcing a lot of these things that people, you know, naturally look to do these days. Yeah, the idea that you require these things or these outside people in order to be successful is obviously just smashing that idea or that, you know, concept. I've got man trying to tell me about mix, about mix, fucking pricks, put them on a the decks, they can't mix, CDJs, they can't 
can't mix Studio desk, they can't mix Don't tell me nothing about mix Man think they're big Quincy Jones out here fam Did they catch two licks? Again, if you don't love this song by now, what are you doing? I don't care if you've never heard grime before. You're in. Now you're in. Here he's talking about criticism, you know, regarding his music or his creative vision or his production from people who aren't talented or who haven't got the skills in that area. You know, who can't sit at a studio desk or some CDJs and know what they're doing. How on earth could they give valid criticism that he should consider for a second when it comes to music production? Yo, is it me or is everyone just having bare meetings? Bare coffee drinking and eating? Dead vibes, I ain't reaching. You man are trying to make boardroom bangers on conference call out speakers. Sorry fam, but my calendar don't rate meetings, don't catch feelings. No. Love it. I mean, I've really just got to be careful to not sort of just fanboy out a little too hard over this song. He talks about the temptation, you know, a lot of people early in their careers, things like coffee meetings and things like that. It is easy to get suckered into those kind of distractions and time wasting exercises. There's a saying from my previous corporate line of work, which while has its many flaws, the idea that you should only be focusing on revenue generating activities. Obviously for a musician that is producing, writing, uh, mixing, you know, that obviously varies in field to field, but the core principle or concept is the same. There will always be revenue generating activities and always be distractions. The more you're able to focus on the former, the more productive and ultimately the more successful you will be. Not gonna lie, I know where I'm heading. Not gonna lie, the music's spreading. Not gonna lie, so you man are breading. Not gonna lie. All these 10 man CC emails do my heading. Not gonna lie. Only time I posed with a contract was on my wedding. Not gonna lie. Again, just, you know, commentary on where people pay their attention and focus. Things like, you know, the 10 person CC'd emails where no one is taking responsibility, no one is taking action, no one is driving any sort of outcome or result. And the, the line at the end there about the only contract him posing for is his wedding. Uh, I love that. And again, the idea of the success not happening in the office when you sign that contract, the success is when you create something of value that, you know, the people enjoy. Fucking industry pricks. It's their job to gas you up quick anything happens to you right now none of these man here are gonna give two shits my advice for the youth out there right now emceeing in the bits jump on a mic and make them hits stop listening to all these pricks i mean this you know direct music commentary on obviously the role labels and executives and things like that when you are on the rise more than happy to be your best friend and when you find yourself in trouble disappear you know i think that those lines obviously speak for themselves. The same underlying experience is obviously true in all fields. The idea that while others are in a position to profit from you, they will have all the time in the world for you. But when it comes, you know, when your chips are down or when you're in trouble, most of those people are probably nowhere to be found. Let's be honest. The route that JME took was different to the route that JK took and that was different to the route that P Money took and that was different to the route that AJ took and that's different to the route that you're gonna take. The blueprint is to carve your own way. Us man open the doors, but once you get through, you have to solve the maze. Probably one of my favorite verses of the song references a number of different grime or artists or MCs and talks about how the factors and the conditions in all of their different journeys are so vastly different based on, you know, not only their individual circumstances or personalities or skills, the world changes and no two people uh, are going to go down the same path. And so looking to copy or replicate the path that someone has taken is only setting yourself up to fail because the world that JME rose up in, you know, starting out as a grime artist 20 years ago is very different to someone the same age when he started getting into the game today. And this verse actually really summarizes a lot of my feelings and hatred of the coaching and kind of guru industry that has blown up today. People trying to sell you shortcuts to becoming successful or rich or famous or whatever it might be. Those people, even if at one point they did find success, found that success in a completely different time. And the idea that they could sell you their path to success, you know, the skills or techniques they used, and those alone will create success for you is just ridiculous. And so this verse does a really good job of, of highlighting why and ultimately you have to solve the maze. Everyone does. 
I do, you do watching this, my kids, their grandkids, they'll have a different maze to solve because the maze always reflects society and the world and where things are at and that never stays the same. Serious. Used to think my style didn't fit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Lost motivation to spit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Used to care about views and clicks till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Bare industry politics till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Used to think my style didn't fit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Lost motivation to spit till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Used to care about views and clicks till I stopped listening to all these pricks. Bare industry politics till I stopped listening to all these pricks. A nice uh, colourful exit to take us out there to remind us all of the sheer quantity of people who act in bad faith that exist in the world. Uh, of course there are an equal if not greater number of people who you should look to connect with and work with and who will help you on your journey to success, but beware the pricks.